uh, we in Larnesia had detected that uh, the wholesale internet bandwidth in Asia is five to six times more expensive in Asia than Europe. That was, I'm talking about way back in 2010. Then my colleague Rohan Samarajiva, he came over and he met the then Executive Secretary Dr. Noelin Hazer and explained it to her and she just loved it. And since then, Larnesia and ESCAP have been working together on the establishment of Asia Pacific Information Superhighway. Now, what that is? It is nothing but ESCAP's foster child, Asian Highway, which started way back in 1950s. What we have suggested is ESCAP should convince its member states to lay optical fiber along this transcontinental highway, which is 143,000 kilometers. It starts from Japan, terminates at Turkey, crisscrossing all the 32 countries in between. The objective is to reduce Asia's exclusive dependence from submarine cable and create a route diversity across the borders over the soil and physically connecting Asia with Europe terrestrially. That will create the enabling environment for the policy makers to further liberalize the international connectivity in this continent, which will ultimately drive down the cost of wholesale internet bandwidth in this continent. The objective is we are migrating from 2G to 3G and very soon we will be again migrating to 4G. 5G is in the horizon. Now, what all these 4G and 5, 5G do? It's all high speed access to internet from mobile phone. How can we do that if we don't have affordable access to broadband? The operators cannot offer the consumers affordable access to broadband unless they have access to affordable wholesale broadband. It's a very simple economics. And uh, with ESCAP from Larnesia, by far, we have studied the state of broadband across this continent. We have drafted a policy document for ESCAP which has been accepted by ESCAP itself. And uh, now we are working to convince the member states to amend the Asian Highway Agreement to incorporate the deployment of optical fiber along this road infrastructure. And not only that, we are also trying to convince the member states to use the Trans-Asian Railway as another right of way for deploying optical fiber. Moreover, we are also telling the member states to use the optical fiber along the high voltage power transmission grid to incorporate it as a telecom transmission backbone. So once we succeed to bundle the three layers of cross-border optical fiber infrastructure by the road, along the train tracks, and along the power transmission grid, Asia will have a highly resilient internet infrastructure. It will be fail-proof, which may sound like a fairy tale today, but trust me, it's a simple reality. And we are jointly working together. Well, you see, right now, countries are having problem with deploying cross-border optical fiber because most of these initiatives are bilateral or maximum it involves a couple of countries. So, when such initiatives are taken for very few countries or for two countries, the risk is extremely high. That's why we have suggested to use the Asian Highway as a preferred right-of-way, which involves 32 countries altogether, which involves the island countries like Japan, Philippines, 
Malaysia, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, and at the same time, there are 11 landlocked developing countries, what we call is LLDCs, who are the member of this Asian Highway Initiative. And out of that, nearly five of them are clustered in Central Asia. So, this composition of Asia Pacific Information Highway membership is going to eliminate all the perceived obstacles which we think as an obstacle today shall remove it by default. In future, Asian citizens, including the rural citizens, shall have access to internet exactly at the same quality what the citizens of developed world are currently having. As the Asian citizens have already enjoyed the access to cellular mobile telephony, which is exactly at the same quality of any developed world, the access to high-speed broadband shall be as equal as that. No country is doing anything wrong. You see, what is happening is countries are now working together to promote cross-border transport movement like trucks, passenger movement, goods movement, even cross-border energy movement. When it comes to telecommunications, Asian policy makers are somehow locked into the submarine cable era, which is certainly not the case with Europe. And Europe has demystified that having access to the seashore means having access to high-speed internet. That is absolutely wrong. If you look at Switzerland, which is a landlocked country, and where the headquarter of International Telecommunications Union is located, that country is world's one of the highly connected country by any standard. Same goes with Austria, Hungary, Czech Republic. These are all landlocked countries. So being landlocked or being by the shore makes no difference whatsoever when it comes to having access to high-speed internet. It's all about the national policy. And we have examples in Asia. Like I can tell you what happened in Armenia. The government has taken radical steps to issue the cellular mobile licenses, which is technology neutral and it allows the operator to do whatever it feels like within the legal framework. The result is phenomenal and these are evident that Armenia has emerged as world's one of the most successful cellular mobile market, although it has a very limited population. So similarly, Asia in this region, it is the home of 60% global population. We are talking about more than $16 trillion economy, whereas people having access to internet, not broadband, internet is less than 30%. So it is a huge disparity. Asians don't deserve it. This is the continent which has written the success story of cellular mobile in terms of voice. Now it's time for Asia to take charge to go forward with high-speed internet. I'm Abu Said Khan. I'm a senior policy fellow in Learn Asia. I am from Bangladesh. I live in Dhaka. Uh, in my professional life, basically what I believe is we must protect competition, not the competitors. That's what truly serves the consumers, the country, the industry.